ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the sexiest pop culture podcast on the planet. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I am joined with... You really slid into that El Nino, <laughs> off Brian. Brian Saber, Captain Cleveland, Browns, Cavs, Indians, training camp in full effect, Baker Mayfield, The Bake Show Season 2, coming to a TV near you this September, CLE Till I Die. How many times have you said that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it just flows out of there. Well, some of it is improv, but most huh. of it. Well, I'm Andrew Newman. I don't have any AKA. Counselor. <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> Counselor. Friend of the mod. <laughs> the show. Happy to be here. And we are happy to have you here. Today we are going to be discussing the newest split from Quentin Tarantino himself, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So there are going to be some spoilers ahead. So if you've not seen it yet and you do not want it spoiled for you, check us out after you go watch it. But if you've seen it, Hope you enjoy the episode, and we're going to kick it off with Captain Cleveland himself, a.k.a. Mr. Sabretooth. Yeah, I forgot about the Sabretooth. Um, <laughs> so so we went and saw it yesterday, um, Brian and, and myself, and Max, shout out to Max, who, Max. who, who I work with. Um, you know, the, the theater was packed, which I, I will say this, I've been to see a lot of Tarantino movies on opening weekend, and the theater wasn't packed. Right. Now, granted, we were at Red Cinema and they're doing some construction and about 30% of the seats, <laughs> about 30% of the seats we had yellow tape over them, but that's, that's not the point. Um, so just from a, from a crowd perspective and, 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 the, and, the, and the fullness of the theater, um, you know, I, I was really impressed by that. Look, it was a really, really good movie. I'm not going to say that it was, you know, great. Um, but it was really good. I'd like to see it again. Um, I, you know, look, it was a buddy flick. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I had the feeling that it was going to be sort of a buddy flick, but as with most Tarantino movies, um, I, I, I think you, you never quite know what to expect. Agreed. So, um, just from the fact that it was sort of a buddy flick and, and DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, uh, you know, I, I thought they were both outstanding, but but the movie itself, it, it was very lazy. I felt, but lazy in a good way, right? It, it just it, it just kind of plotted along. Um, you know, it covered you know what two hours and fifty minute runtime or whatever. Not, yeah. But it was just three days. It was a three day period, two days, and then they they went ahead six months. Right. Uh, so it was like almost three hours. It was three days, and then, like I said, it was just lazy. It kind of plotted along. Um, but in a good way because it took the time to be great for the things that Tarantino's known for. Agreed. Right? I thought the dialogue was absolutely outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some really funny parts. I mean, there was true laugh out loud <laughs> shit. Like, it was, some of the stuff was just absolutely hilarious. But, you know, in, 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 in Tarantino fashion, even, you know, some of just the, you know, the filler content is just, it's outstanding. You know, I think of, you know, uh, DiCaprio when he's sitting there having the conversation with the little girl on the movie set. I mm -hmm. think of, you know, Brad Pitt when he's on the ranch and goes and just wakes up Bruce Dern and you yeah. got Dakota Fanning and all that. Like, all of that's just kind of filler shit, but it, you, you, you always have sort of emotion. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, the dialogue was outstanding visually it was it was absolutely masterful um it was an ode to the golden age of cinema oh yeah uh, it was bright it was and it was beautiful throughout um you know the the, the costumes and the scenery uh, it was very 60s and it was very hollywood oh yeah um it was just it, it was great from that perspective i really enjoyed all of the sort of nostalgia everywhere they went there was either uh like there was something movie related, uh, like a poster of a movie or a billboard of a mm -hmm. movie, or they were going past a theater. I mean, there was, there was, um, uh, movie, um, related items throughout. And as always, uh, the music, um, uh, was, was outstanding as well. I thought DiCaprio was, was perfect, but, but you expect that. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel like Brad Pitt stole the show. Um, Without doing much, and I don't mean that in a very condescending way. No. But I think, I mean, to that point there, I thought he did a fantastic job. And did, and Brandy, the dog. See, the know. dog was <laughs> outstanding. Um, 
You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think both of them are definitely going to get nominated for awards. But but for me, um, you know, I, I just, I thought, I thought Brad Pitt absolutely stole the show. So, um, that's it. That's all I got. I like it. I like it. Andrew, what were your, uh, so, your thoughts on it? I saw it Friday, late afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like Tarantino. No, no court. No court on Friday. <laughs> no, sir. No. Get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. It's generally what I do every day. Uh, but I like a lot of Tarantino movies. I also like seeing movies by myself a lot. Both of those things happen here. Well, you don't really have a chance. I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> you got us, man. You got us. He was like, ah, we're going to go. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go earlier than that. Uh, I'm surprised that I didn't. I thought about seeing it again yesterday. You said it was a good movie. I thought it was a great movie. Yeah. I really liked it. Um, I don't know how much we want to get into. I no, no. was in the middle of my Tarantino movies. Get into that. But I wrote down some things as soon as I came out of the movie and got home because I was going to get online and read a bunch of stuff, but I didn't want that to completely, you know, I'm going to steal some stuff from some other people, so sure. I sound smart. But <laughs> I wanted some of my own thoughts in it. Uh, and the first thing I wrote down is nothing happened, question mark. Which is not true. I mean, stuff happened, but it wasn't. Like Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, the old ones, Jackie Browns, eh, maybe nothing happens. But right. like, they just kind of hung out and did stuff. And then the end got fucking crazy. And <laughs> yeah, and Tino cool. yeah. But for a lot of the movie, nothing happened. And the next thing I wrote was, is that kind of the point? A lot of the movies, a lot of the stuff that you saw throughout that whole time with the Westerns and the movies they were filming, those are very black and white movies. Well, right. literally, I guess that was part of the thing is the movies are not color. But right. There's a good guy, there's a bad guy, which apparently is called a heavy, the heavy. news to yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, you know, they don't hide it from me. It's very clearly, <laughs> I've never heard that term. Me either. Uh, but there's a good guy, there's a bad guy, they fight at the end, the good guy wins. They're very, just, you know what the plot is, you know what's going to happen. This movie, I had no clue what was going to happen. Yeah. I'd seen the trailer a lot. I don't think I could quote you a line from this movie that's not in the trailer right now. Which I don't know. I, I can. can. Don't cry in front of the Mexicans. That's my favorite line. <laughs> yeah. Favorite line in the whole fucking movie. All right. Uh, I still can't. Now. now I can question one. But, uh, All right, now. Don't cry in front of the Mexicans. <laughs> this movie was a lot was a lot about the directing and the mm-hmm. actors and the acting and the dialogue. Yeah. And Tarantino movies do that a lot. You could very clearly tell this was a Quentin Tarantino movie yeah yeah tarantino films it's probably the only one partly because i just don't follow that many directors but it's the only director that i'm excited because it's a tarantino movie yeah there's other movies that i hear are coming out that have say dicaprio like there's a scorsese film that's going to be on netflix that i believe has dicaprio coming out the irish man called the irishman so uh i hear about that and i'm like oh this movie sounds good oh that's who the director is right that's cool it's not like, I don't know it's coming ahead of time. Like, sure. I don't know. Like, I know what Tarantino's next movie is going to be. I've never seen an episode of Star Trek in my life, but mm. I'm going to go see it. <laughs> uh, might even watch some Star Trek, maybe. But I just thought the movie was really good. There's not a lot of Charlie in the movie. No. Um, I thought that was weird. It, I, I, it was unexpected. It was for definitely me. unexpected. So that was the next thing I wrote. And, and I he's only of, in it once, right? Yeah. One scene, and he, where he walks up to the house, yeah. nobody's home, or they he's looking, I don't know. I don't know the real history that I, much. So I read about I it. I did too, but I yeah. didn't at the time. I didn't at the time either. Okay. Uh, and I think we'll probably get into the ending of this movie more at some point. But, you know, we already know sort of who Charles Manson is. Sure. Like, we don't need to spend a lot. Of, this is a very long movie. It's 161 minute right. runtime. time. Right. Uh, and, and I guess it was, what, four hours at, when they when they showed it at Con? Which is was crazy. It? Yeah. Like, longer? Yeah. 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 But, uh. So he's not in it much. He's obviously not there at the end. He wasn't there in real life when he sent the Goonies out to go kill this Tate. <laughs> the Goonies. Uh, but do we really need him in there? I don't think so. I mean, I, I was intrigued by it going in. And apparently the whole plot of this movie has been on Wikipedia for like the last month and a half. Mm. I didn't read it. Right. But, but even if the, you read the plot before you went in But then there, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been shocked that he's not in it. Well, right. I don't think if you if, – if I wrote the plot to this movie, it, it wouldn't really – give you an idea of what the movie was. But I would know Charlie's not. DiCaprio and Brad Pitt driving around, talking, drinking, crying. Nothing happens. (laughs) But it's a good movie. Uh, I mean, I did. I really liked it. Uh, You know, I guess it falls in the middle of my Tarantinos, but, you know, Charlie, Charles Manson, he's he's a mysterious character. Mm -hmm. People are kind of enamored by him. Obviously, he's a terrible human being, but... There's some intrigue around him. And Allegedly. Like, what the hell's going on? Allegedly, in? counsel. Uh, oh, no, I think they convicted him. I think he's guilty. Oh. I think you can drop the allegedly once you lose the trial. I think that's how it works. But, uh, you know, you know, 
it would have been weird for him to do a whole movie, which is when this thing first got announced. Everyone was like, wait, he's doing a Charles Manson That's movie? Right. Like, what the fuck? Right. But I think he does that on purpose. He does. Yeah. And I thought he was maybe going to kill Charles Manson like he kills Hitler. Right. Or his bastards. Right. I mean, he, they killed people that stopped the tape murders, but I, I just thought the whole thing was just fascinating mm. uh, from start to finish. And it was a long movie, but I, I didn't feel like it was It did not feel long. long. And then it's, obviously all those people still die. Right, like well, I don't know. Well, they. I mean, historically, historically, but I were, think well, there there was five people in the house. Yeah. So, in in theory, DiCaprio doesn't make it to see Brad Pitt in the hospital the next day because he gets murdered. Or in the house history that night. is altered. Right. Or history is altered. I think it's more history is altered, history's just altered. like in Glorious Bastards. Yeah. Yeah. I think this was Tarantino's way of being like, "Fuck Charles Manson. Fuck I don't want to." Yeah. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Fuck, fucking, you know, hippies. fucking hippies. <laughs> fucking hippies. Fucking yeah. hippie Take bastard. <laughs> don't cry in front of the magazine. Yeah. Fucking hippies. You want me to look like a fucking hippie? <laughs> Ryan, what did you think of the movie? Um, I, too, I thought it was great. You know, um, I thought it was a great ode to classic Hollywood, just like Saba touched on. It, you, you felt like you were there, um, you know, even though we were not born or lived in that time period. Well, but... you, were, you were close. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Damn you, bastard. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it looked like, like classic Hollywood as far as, you know, the neon lights and the locations. I mean, they definitely didn't spare any expense on, on bringing that look in. And as someone who collects movie posters myself, it was great to see all those kind of like Attack of the 50-Foot Woman and like the European style uh, movie posters that they had throughout, uh, whether if it's uh, DiCaprio's place, um, primarily he had a bunch there, but just the different scenes in, in there. Um, in terms of like Tarantino films, to me, I thought this was very tame. And I use that word not in like condescending or trying to talk shit about it. But it is to me a lot like Jackie Brown in terms of like from violence. From it, violence it was there was gore. less like objective racism and just cursing and exactly. shock stuff and violence. Exactly. Which some of his movies I think he does that well, but this one just Well it certainly didn't wasn't happen. it certainly wasn't Django, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk about <laughs> right. people in his garage and right. his coffee. Or his even movie. hateful yeah. eight. But yeah, it's tame for Tarantino. Like to me this one where most of his his, his movies do get like a hard R rating. This one definitely just got like an R. And it was really primarily for language and then the shit show that happens at the end yeah, of uh, the, movie. the movie. You know, because up until then, I was like, it was really just the swearing. Some violence. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I thought it was great. Leo is a, is a force per usual. You know, his, his performance yeah. of Rick Dalton is just spot on. You know, Rick Dalton, a little backstory here, is just an actor in his, what, like late 30s, early Probably. 40s maybe. Yeah. Um, kind of... Trying, he's trying to find himself. He's not getting the roles he used to be. He's typecast now but as he, a heavy. But you get the sense that he was never like a huge right, star, right? Right, more of a well, B-lister yeah, that just kind of made it. TV show, I guess he was pretty famous, and then I guess it went downhill yeah. or something, and yeah. then he tried to go into movies and yeah. it didn't work out. Exactly. I, yeah. I mean, he's the whole part of the whole thing in the movie where he's like down on his luck and down and out, and he's still living in a nice yeah. house yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah, he's not still struggling. Still working. <laughs> Brad Pitt's character is like living in a trailer outside of a drive-in theater, and it's right. like the whole time the movie goes on, it is kind of a buddy film. So it's a buddy that, It's but definitely a buddy It's flip. not like a just buddy cop film or something. Like, they never get into the whole, like, they don't ever have a heart-to-heart -heart or like sit down. I mean, they get drunk together at right. the time, but right. they don't like, there's no fallout of you have money, I don't. What right. the hell? They don't. There's no none of that dramas in the movie, and it's not needed. Yeah, and that's the thing too with Rick Dalton with um, the uh, so what was this um, Brad Cliff. Pitt's Cliff. Cliff? You can tell he's kind of at the crossroads too because he's not a well-renowned stunt uh, stuntman he himself. He hadn't been a full. He hadn't done full-time work for. A so they're of both. Years. Yeah, they're both kind of in limbo as far as Hollywood. But that terms was kind of his fault, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to that. Well, not, not <laughs> even that. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly, the the allegedly, that's, that's where the allegedly part. comes in. The killing the wife thing, but then uh, you know the hilarious scene God. with uh, with Bruce the Lee, Bruce Lee scene. and uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, <laughs> the sound effects. The guy who plays Bruce Lee, who is Richard. Michael Mo. Is Michael Mo. Thank you for that. I have that in my notes somewhere sounds just like him looks just like him um I, I grew up a huge bruce lee fan thanks to my dad and still love bruce lee movies so it was great to see an interpretation of him in a tarantino flick um 
but yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the acting superb with the cameos. I don't think they tried to do too much with any of the cameos. Well, I nobody thought had everybody a, nobody was just had more than a few lines of dialogue. Exactly. Even even Margot Robbie, right? right? She only had a few lines. Like it was literally. People were giving him shit for that. Ninety-five yeah. percent of the movie and the dialogue was Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, which. To be honest with you, I actually kind of like. I'm fine yeah. with it. And I mean, that's I think that's the way it's set up. I mean, Margot Robbie was good in the movie, and I know that Quentin's got a lot of shit because she didn't have a predominant role. But that, I don't think that's the way he intended it. You know, the whole Sharon Tate thing was more. Yes, this happens along the lines of the Manson murders, but it's more just like you said. It's a buddy flick. It's more about Brad Pitt and and um, uh, DiCaprio, and and this and this one too on the dialogue thing is. I actually think that this is the perfect amount of dialogue for a Tarantino movie. Because most of his flicks, there's always like one scene or one like one character that gets a little bit too much dialogue and the scene and you know starts to fizzle a little bit. This was the one like one of the few oh, the films. Hate White movie. <laughs> right, right. Where I think actually, everybody I got like the right amount of dialogue. I think I don't think it was too much. So, but the, I mean that was my take on it. You know, as far as some highlights for me. Uh, just like you said, Pitt definitely stole the show as a BFF and stunt man. His his, his pit bull Brandy, whose real name is actually Sayuri S A Y U R I U U R I, is from uh, Delaware Red Pit Bulls in Wilmington, Delaware. So you know the whole story like except have, for the dog's name, the <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the dog actually received the Palm Dog Award at the Cannes Film Festival for best nice. canine performance. Nice. So he was the first one to uh, to win something for the movie. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I think the cameos were fantastic. I thought Margot was great at Sharon Tate. Uh, Pacino was not even in it that much, and I thought he was just solid the way he was. Like I said, I don't he's think this was something. For, uh, yeah, I don't know if he's got a – I wouldn't say he's a cameo role necessarily. Right. Like Timothy Oliphant's a cameo yeah. role. Yeah. Some of these other people are cameo roles. Pacino's got a small role, same with Margot Robbie, but they're – they played characters in sure. the exactly. movie. They advanced the plot along. I guess. Yeah. Sends them to Rome for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I guess advances the time enough for the, six the months. murders to yeah. happen. And he did what, like four movies in yeah. six months or something like that? Yeah. Which I mean back then they're cranking them out. I guess so. That's <laughs> the thing. I don't know how any of these things work. Like, <laughs> so the spaghetti western started in Italy? Apparently. Yeah, that's how it got the term spaghetti western. Wow, well, yeah. that actually makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. now oh, when you said it. Because it's spaghetti. Italian food. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Black Which, ball. you know, Tarantino loves spaghetti westerns. Well, seeing as how I speak the most Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while we're on that, you know, I think we should go ahead and get to, like, the highlights. What are some of your favorite highlights, lines, moments from the, from the movie itself? You know, for, for me, the, you know, the Bruce Lee scene where, you know, Cliff, Brad Pitt character and him fight is <laughs> I mean it's fucking hilarious <laughs> um you know and we touched on at the end you know the ending um and here's the thing I, I was thinking when I walked out like I've seen so many Tarantino movies now obviously I've seen eight I have the only one I haven't seen is Death Proof but I've seen so many Tarantino movies that I am desensitized to his violence. <laughs> right. Even though when that girl's head got smashed repeatedly, even I was like, "No, God damn!" I was laughing hysterically. Well, yeah, I think that time. was that's what he's he's, he's Tarantino some such such a great job of being so violent that that scene is funny. It's just like it's I, I don't know horribly gruesome, but it's funny because um, it's Tarantino. What else? You, you know, those are the two. Those are the two that really that really sort of stick out. I mean, I think those are probably the two that stick out for everybody. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? What do you? What so, do you anything be beyond that the one? The Bruce Lee scenes. Him even like so when Sharon when Margaret Robbie goes to watch her movie <coughs> and she's like learning how to play fight. Apparently Bruce Lee did that. And See, I, I didn't know that. Fight. I thought Apparently, that was really cool because I did not know that. Blamed Bruce Lee at one point for the man's the murders, murders because yeah, they didn't that. know who did it and they were Bruce Lee was friends with them because he had been over their training. Yeah. And he was like Bruce Lee is the only person that could kill five people by himself. So maybe it was him. Makes that was like the next day. Clearly right. they figured it out, and that wasn't like accused. It's not a big story. But. Right. So the memorable that Bruce Lee fight, it was just hilarious. When they threw him into the car. I almost <laughs> I liked it better. So you're the same kick again. Where the, the, I don't know if she was the casting director for the movie, the wife. The wife. Who mm -hmm. hated him. Yeah. Was like Sharon or something. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and the husband just kept repeating the, the exact same thing <laughs> back to Brad Pitt. Uh, I enjoyed that. Kurt Russell, good, great. Uh, oh, I enjoyed yes. the scenes on the farm 
with the blind guy. Mm-hmm. Bruce, that, Bruce Dern. Yeah. yeah. You know, that got more Tarantino-esque where you didn't know. There was a little bit of suspense. You didn't quite know what the hell was going to happen. Right. Once again, nothing happened. You just beat well, up that beat, one beat fucking hippie. Well, you beat the shit out of that hippie. And good know. thing, you know, Tex <laughs> and then made, him, time. made him like, change what, his tire. What was yeah. Tex going to do if he'd well, shown up on the horse was and got, get, fucked up. get his ass kicked too? Yeah. I mean, he tossed the man a tire iron and then beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, come on! Yuppie. How badass he was! He's yeah, like, here he you was. go. It's Brad my tire. Pitt, Brad Pitt was very badass. He um, was more badass than this in the Glorious Bastards, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I, I think, he, you know, because he had fight scenes, you know, and in Glorious yeah. Bastards, he was, you know, just kind of the the ringleader, right? right. And everybody right. else sort of, you know, the bear Jew and all that. The bear Jew. He was just in charge of killing the Nazis. <laughs> Nazis. Um, Obviously, the end scene, you all said you had a full theater. Mine, Friday afternoon, there was like 10 people in it. Mm. Uh, but it still got audible laughs when DiCaprio pulls out that flamethrower. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to stand up and cheer. It was that awesome. And then they, they, them talking about it later, and he's yeah. like, the flamethrower from that movie? The 14th that I don't yeah. remember the name of? Yes. And it was funny when they were showing him first learning how to use it. And he's like, can we make it less hot? <laughs> yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> yeah. He's can like, it's a, flame, it's a flamethrower, man. <laughs> so, apparently, the, uh, so I'm a big Justified fan. So I okay. like Timothy I love that show. Um, I'm actually watching it. I'm watching I've seen I'm, it like two or so, three times. Well, I, but I, I watched the first four seasons. And then I just kind of stopped. Mm-hmm. And then last weekend I started binging. I started watching episode five. So the so, our season five with with Rappaport. Right. I'm about three that or four. Fuck. Yeah, I'm about three or four <laughs> in. But I, that show's outstanding. I just uh, totally so, unrelated. I like Timothy Olyphant. I like Walter Goggins a lot too. Oh so God, I, yes. Kind of like Hateful Eight more than some of his other movies. But as far as this movie's concerned, apparently Lancer was an actual movie yes. that was mm-hmm. made. I I didn't know any of that. Movie or show? TV show. show, show whatever. Yeah. yeah, show. I guess so. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed all the scenes where they were almost like when he was telling that the bar owner's daughter to come down. I was like, "Oh shit, what's going to happen?" Then I was like, "Wait, this isn't the movie." No, <laughs> right? The but, but I figured yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah, I figured it out while it was happening. Though, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I knew it wasn't okay. the actual movie, but I, I yeah. got immersed in it, and it was kind of like you were watching another show multiple times throughout this movie. There were other scenes and other stuff that were acting, but. It was kind of neat to watch. Oh, yeah. See, I mean, I seeing the, the thought process of an actor and when they don't get it right, you know, and just, he, like, the scene in the wow. trailer is so fun. I mean, it's hysterical, but I also kind of feel bad, too, because he's beating himself up, and he does the whole do 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 do. Yeah. You know, he's like, if you don't fucking get this right, you're good. And he's looking at himself in the mirror. Yeah, I'm going to go home and blow my fucking brains out all over the pool. Yeah. <laughs> And then I blamed Ford. I was like, yeah, that sounded like me this morning. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not upset. Because he's like, you, couldn't, you couldn't have stopped at four whiskey sours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. I, I forgot like, that about that. sounded like a conversation I was having with myself this morning. <laughs> that's right. Oh, God. And while, while his life is in the complete shitter and he's apparently going broke, he's still got frozen margaritas in a pitcher. God. Him wandering around in a robe with a pitcher of frozen margaritas. <laughs> you fucking hippies! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he loves his damn uh, frozen margaritas, that's for sure. Those whiskey sours. <laughs> um, as far as favorite lines, Sabe already said it. The when you know this is the beginning of the movie too. The don't cry in front of the Mexicans. I fucking <laughs> lost it. And I will say this too. And I thought I'm sure you probably picked up on it. As far as the the age range in the movie theater, to me that was a little interesting for especially for a Tarantino film. There was a lot. Of older people there. Dude, the lady Mine next to me was probably 75 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. Uh, it seemed like it was like they were going to start calling bingo numbers out. But yeah. when we walked in, it was it was definitely an older crowd. One lady next to me got upset because she couldn't find a place for her purse. There was a dude. Yeah, there was a, yeah, whole, yeah, thing. There, there was a there whole thing going on. And people, I, I will say this. If you're one of those assholes that walks into the theater, like, after the credits start and or the trailer talking. starts, and you're trying to find a seat... That is on you. It is not everybody else's fault because you are late to the you movie. Know what time the movie this is why you know I like what time the movie starts. I movies by myself in right. the afternoon without my friends that don't exist. Because <laughs> then there's nobody there. Except sometimes people still talk. And I'm right. Like, there's no one to even to talk to. You're talking to yourself <laughs> during the movie. But yeah, I mean, it was a packed house. Like I said, I think the age difference. And to me, I don't know if it was more tarantino or is it because of the, the cameos from all the cast or because it was based on 1969 yeah. right so i think it, you know it might have had a lot to do whereas i don't see the same crowd maybe going to see django 
or uh, or Jackie Brown. Yeah. You know, so that that I thought was a little interesting, and I mean, it ended up having a forty million dollar weekend, which you know, obviously Apparently compared, it's, it's, biggest opening. it's his biggest opening. So thirty eight point five million was in Glorious Bastards, which at the time was his biggest. So this is now his biggest, and you know, we live in an age now to where Disney's cranking out seventy million dollar weekends well, like it's their job, movie right? Franchise. So uh, it's good to exists. see exactly. It's it's good to see an original story and a rated R flick. Have a good, you know, opening weekend. Uh, shout out to all the celeb kids in the movie. So Maya Hawk from uh, Stranger Things Season 3 plays Fly, uh, Flower Child. Uh, the kid to Uma and Ethan Hawk, Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawk. Uh, we got Margaret Qualey, I believe. She played Pussycat. She is a daughter of Annie McDowell, and she actually grew up in Asheville, North Carolina. So shout out to Margaret. Harley Quinn Smith played Froggy. So Kevin Smith's little girl. And Rumor Willis. The child of Bruce Willis and Demi Moore played uh, Jonah Pettit. So that's what she I got. She went to lunch with Sharon Tate the day she was murdered. Really? That, that's that's her character's role. Ah, I did not know that. Yeah, that's what I, I got. I brought it up before we started recording. The young girl who's in the Timothy hmm. Olyphant show and say, but you said you had some backstory. Yes. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed her. So she was great. Her yes. acting. It reminded me of the Game of Thrones girl. Uh, Liana yeah, Mormont. Yeah. Yeah. The so bear. apparently, mm. this little girl, and in, in one of the articles I was reading, to get more background. So Tarantino was like revising the final version of the script, and he needed, he felt like he was missing something from. He was he added a couple different things at the end, and apparently, when he writes, he sits in his like living room or whatever and has the TV on. And whatever show she's on, some show. Okay. Whatever show she's on was on the TV, and he was like looking up, like thinking, watching her, and he's like, "It's like, oh, I think I like this girl from for this movie." <laughs> and wrote right. and wrote the role for works. her, yeah, just off of the TV show that he was watching while he was trying to be creative. Oh wow! So he saw a girl on TV and wrote a role for her in the movie versus. Having a character and then finding a person to play that, which right. I think is probably typically how it works. Sure. So she was only in the show because of, you know, chance. Damn, that's awesome. Yep. And to me, I think she plays a very vital part in the movie, too, because technically she kind of helps Rick Dalton, Leo, Leo's character, get his group back, per se. Yeah, you know, when she says to him, that that's the best acting I've ever seen, yeah. you know, he starts fucking crying, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, he cries a lot. He does movie. cry a lot in the movie, but, but man. Yeah, he's going through a tough time. He is. He's going through some shit. He's an emotional guy. He's an emotional actor. Yeah. Uh, Anybody who's listening to this podcast, you could splice this into the beginning. Scratch out the spoiler talk, because I don't think we've spoiled anything. We have Yeah, I mean, we and really have there's, there's not much to spoil yeah, in the movie. Nothing happened. Happened. It's All not. Right. It's not fucking, you know. Iron Man doesn't die in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. my dog. R.I.P. my know, dog, Charles like, Mason yeah. followers. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think maybe the big spoiler is that it really doesn't have anything to do with the Manson murders. Right. You know what I mean? Very, right. very loosely based on that. I think that's probably the biggest spoiler. It is It is very loosely based on it, but we enjoyed it. You know, check it out. Like like I said, it's a, it's a tame Tarantino flick, so if, you have, if you're hanging out with someone who's never seen a Tarantino movie, I don't know how that's possible. But you want to start them off somewhere. Like, to me, this is almost like where I would start someone off that's never seen a Tarantino flick and then ease them into the gore of Inglorious Bastards and, like, Pulp Fiction and shit like that. You know, especially if they have Shot a weak conscience. in the face. <laughs> so, you know, this is <laughs> more... Accident. Yeah, this would be, like, the PG-13 Tarantino movie. If there yeah, was one that was going to be PG-13, this would be it. And that's not a slight towards Quentin at all whatsoever. If, it's like, a great flick. Ten seconds of the ending didn't exist, and Tarantino didn't direct it. This is probably PG thirteen. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, as far as grades go, like I said, I, I thought it was a great movie. I'm going to give it an A minus. Um, we decided to, and we're going to get to a little bit do uh, top Leo performances. We had a Tarantino episode before. Where we kind of did like our top three movies or whatever. This this definitely falls in the top five for me. Um, you know, for an almost three hour long flick, I think it's very enjoyable. The rewatchability factor is very, very high on it. And, uh, like I said, the performances and cameos are, are spectacular, especially Leo. He should definitely be nominated for this role as well as Brad Pitt. Um, you know, Leo goes above and beyond and not that Brad Pitt doesn't. Brad Pitt, just like Saba says, he doesn't have to do much, but he does steal the show where Leo has more. Oh, no, you're good. Know. 
I don't know how Oscar nominations work. Are they both leading actors? Is one a supporting I think, actor? I think one? they will both be leading. Okay. I think so, too. Well, so, yeah, yeah, that's too. a good question, though. Because I would argue question. that Brad Pitt's actually the main character. I would, too, but they both get a... That's a, that's a very good argument. I don't, I don't know how that works. I don't know how... I don't know if that's... You just get submitted... I know a lot of TV shows will do themselves as a miniseries to get into a right, category. Or right, right. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And, of course, we have a lot more movies to come this year. You know, of course, you, you already talked about the Mr. Rogers thing. I would be surprised if Tom Hanks doesn't get nominated for that. Um, and we've had some good performances so far. But, you know, back to this film here, A-, minus. you know, like I said, really good Tarantino flick. And if, you, like I said, you're hanging out with someone that's not a Tarantino fan or just has never seen their movies, this is a great starting point. Or to maybe kind of change their opinion of Tarantino in general. Uh, you know, I would give it, you know, B plus, A minus. I, I think it falls into my my second tier uh, of, of Tarantino movies. Um, you know, like like Brian said, we, we have a Tarantino episode, so if you haven't listened to that, I urge you to to go back and listen to that. When you know, for for me, the first tier is, is his first three movies. You know, I think Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, and I know a lot of people don't love Jackie Brown, but I do. It's one of my favorites. Those are the top three. For me, what this has actually done is it's moved Kill Bill out of the second tier oh, wow. and yeah. down into the bottom that's three. Look at my range but but that's only – Kill Bill Volume 1 was really, really good. Kill Bill Volume 2 was so bad that it makes that – you have to, you know, view it as one movie. And I think and that's how moved, he views it. Yeah, I think it, you know, it moves it down. So what I would say is, for me, it's number five. Uh, what would go in front of it is um, uh, Inglorious Bastards, and what would go after it is Django. Nice. So, so it's nice. right in between Solid those list. two. Um, you know, just to piggyback off of what you know, what I said and what you said about them being nominated, uh, I anticipate a lot of no- lot of nominations, Golden Globes, a uh, lot of wins. You know, Golden Globes and Oscars, uh, directing, writing, editing, costumes. Not not just Agreed. the acting. I mean, Agreed. I think. Across the board, it is going to be heavily nominated. You know, it is Tarantino, so, you know, you may not get the directing win for it, but I certainly <coughs> think that he has the potential you know, to, get a, to get a writer. So there's, one. like, director, there's movie, and then mm-hmm. there's a third one where it's, like, oh, I guess script. Some so it's like, whether it's original or one. adapted. Yeah, yeah. so that, I feel like there's another one where, like, maybe you don't win the director, but you'll, like, slip in the guy who people like that he slides that's in what they'll, that, that, Well, that's yeah. what I was sort of alluding to. He probably won't get director, but they'll, he'll probably win... Uh, you know, best original screenplay yeah. because you know just to go back to the Mister Rogers, that's an adapted screenplay. That's actually loosely based off of a book that was written of off of the um, the relationship he had with the, the guy who did the article. On yeah, it. and mm-hmm. the the the, uh, the documentary right. and all that. So you know, I, I think I think that's where they'll get it. But I think definitely with the editing, the uh, the writing, and, and the costumes for sure. But uh, you know, I give it a B plus. I give it an A minus. Uh, I'd probably lean more towards towards the B plus, but yeah, it falls falls right in the middle of that second tier for me. So it is on my list here, and I've got the Kill Bill split for whatever reason. <laughs> Most uh, people do. <laughs> it is well that they re-released it again, so it depends on how you want to look at what movies came out with when. If you want to count it as one movie, it came out after some stuff. Although, right. Anyway, semantics, but it is a. Uh, it's number four for me on the list. I really liked it. Like, mm-hmm. It still falls as a B plus. I just kind of made up all these rankings. Uh, got Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs at the top, then Django and Hollywood. I like the Hateful Eight a lot. Then it goes Kill Bill One, Bastard, Kill Bill Two, and Death Proof down at the bottom. Where's Jackie mm-hmm. Brown at? Oh, Jackie Brown. Sorry, it's right between <laughs> Hateful Eight. That's okay. my bad. Good. Yeah, I like Jackie Brown. Good. A lot, a lot of people, people want to see your heart rate go up. A lot of people don't. <laughs> man. And, 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 and it fucking 1997, what a great year, you know. Yeah. Jackie Brown is outstanding. De Niro is really than that. Dude, uh, fucking Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gave this movie that. So the runtimes, it's mentioned it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is 161. I said it's a very long runtime, but it didn't feel long. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I just started going through the rest of the movies. Pulp Fiction is 154 minutes. Doesn't feel like a long movie to me. Jackie Brown is 154 minutes. He likes 154 minutes. By the way. So, Jackie Brown, I do <laughs> think a good, feels like a long movie. What the significance of that is? Yeah. I'm sure he did it on purpose because uh, Jackie Brown's 153. So wow. the first three movies are one. Oh no, Reservoir Dogs is 99. Okay. Uh, so so I'm getting all over the place. Jackie Brown's 154. Pulp Fiction 154. Uh, 
And Glorious Bastards is 153. My probably, eye looks like a J, and I'm like, what There's am I probably at? a six hour version of Reservoir Dogs probably. out there somewhere. Oh, yeah. uh, Django yeah. and Hateful Eight are a little bit longer than this movie, but Hateful Eight's broken up into the two halves. Yeah. Kill Bill, if it's over three hours if you put them together. Yeah. yeah. Or it's 111 minutes and 137 minutes, so it's a little broken up. So this is this is a long movie, but Tarantino makes long movies right. outside of Reservoir Dogs, which right. was his first movie. So and, I don't know if that had anything to do with it. So technically, his shortest one would be what? Death Proof, then? Well, Death Proof, no. So really? I wrote when I wrote these before I looked up the times. Death Proof, uh, which I wrote as Grindhouse, which apparently is the whole movie because the whole movie of Grindhouse is three hours, and I was like, that can't be right. Right. Death Proof is 127 minutes. Really? Huh. Yeah. So it's longer than Reservoir Dogs, which is 99 minutes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, not a guess. So I've Robert Rodriguez gets like an hour and some a little bit of change, yeah. and then the whole. But the, to me, the Death Proof is extremely forgettable. I've never seen it. The it's, Robert Rodriguez uh, portion I like. It's what you remember. It's got the girl with the gun yeah, on her leg. It's, it's gore fest, you would say. Zombies and death proof. It's like Kurt Russell in a car. And, and dialogue. I don't know what happens. I think he dies. <laughs> <laughs> he gets the really shit kicked remember. out of him by, yeah. by five chicks. I don't even know if he dies. I feel like he dies. But I don't remember. <laughs> sure he does. Yeah, we'll just say he dies. Uh, but it's, you know, this movie from start to finish, I went into it. So, uh, The Avengers was a very long movie. Mm -hmm. and it didn't necessarily feel long to me, but, like, by the end of it, I was like, okay. Let's I wrap it up. <laughs> I know the end's coming. Right. This movie, I was like, is this the end? Right. I don't know how long it's been. How long have I been here? That's a good Is there point. more coming? Yeah. Like, it, once again, it didn't have a very clear start or finish. There's yeah. good bad guys. There's good people, and there's bad people, yeah. but the bad people die. Yeah. Well, we missed we missed a post credit scene. There, oh, so, there are so many people sitting in my damn theater. I'm like, Quentin Tarantino doesn't have no goddamn post credit scene. So there's there was one, one, and it's you and know, so it, spoiler of course coming ahead. I don't know if it's on YouTube yet, but I read yeah. it today because oh, I was waiting. You know, yeah. in typical Tarantino fashion, no, fuck. I was oh, waiting. Man. I was waiting for a couple kind of nods to his old. I was waiting for a red apple pack of smokes to show up somewhere. It didn't. It didn't. And then I was. And then apparently I missed this. What's that? No. Tarantino question mark. Oh no 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 no! He wasn't in it. Australian accent. I, I meant as far as like like some of his props. Right. So well, apparently I there was a big Kahuna. The there was a big Kahuna billboard that I miss. So that. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. <laughs> so damn good. Um, but yeah, apparently it's it's uh, Leo playing his character, but doing a commercial for Red Apple cigarettes. Really? That's fucking yeah. amazing. Okay, yeah. so it's, it, there's Whoa. nothing... It's not like... Yeah, it's not tied it's not into the movie. Star Trek. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, William Shatner shows up. <laughs> no, so that's what uh, that's what we miss. So uh, It's unfortunate, but we couldn't wait to get out of that theater, though, because it was full of miserable old people with broken down chairs. <laughs> yeah. And I know they're remodeling, so trust me, we still love Red Cinemas. Shout out they're, to Red Cinemas. Yeah, shout out to Red Cinemas and Coda's Properties. They're just Sport remodeling. Local. So they're oh, putting in the more YouTube. comfortable seats. Don't worry. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll definitely check that out. Um, for the last part of the show, we are going to get into Leonardo. Uh, we're going to talk about our three favorite roles of his. But before we do that, as mentioned before, Andrew Newman's not just a friend of the show, but he's also one of our incredible sponsors. He is uh, Attorney Newman. I am an attorney. And my attorney last name Newman? is Newman. So I was also like... the name of my website. So, <laughs> so we'll let you kind of uh, we'll let you plug yourself here. <laughs> I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'm located in Greensboro. I routinely go to Guilford County and Forsyth County, but really anywhere in about an hour's reach from here. Or if you want to pay me enough, I'll drive anywhere in the state. There but you, go. you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, phone, call, text, 336-663-2388. The website is attorneynewman.com. <laughs> As long as they're not yours. <laughs> and I have gotten... So I, I did, not mine. He hasn't gotten... You gotta, you gotta break that sentence. Uh, I've done... We'll, we'll do that and post that. I've done family law, though, and yeah. I have had plenty of dick pics and photos that get God. brought up in those cases. So, sort of, get dick pics. <laughs> sort of. Don't send him any. Yeah. But I'm good. I don't need any. Unless you get charged with soliciting somebody with your dick pic, then I'll probably have to see them. Don't start exist. off the conversation like Hopefully that. Hopefully they don't exist, then you're fine. Don't send dick pics to underage anybody. kids. To anybody. Good advice right there. there you can't go. give blatant legal advice, but that, don't do it. That I can't. I can say that. 100% confident. Do not send dick pics. There you go. Sure. Make sure you hit them up for all your, uh, your, your commercial for your, your practice. Yeah. The dude is fantastic. But if you do. <laughs> 
Let me know. He's on, he's on the website on our sponsors page. Again, the website is attorneynewman.com. So I think we'll you know go ahead and start off with you, Andrew. We're going to do uh, you know our top three favorite uh, Leonardo DiCaprio roles and then some honorable mentions if you have some, and then we'll just go around the table like that. So I wrote down six things. I don't know, do we like go and do I just You can do whatever you want, man. You can do your top three. You can do one, two, three. So, so. My number one for me is Catch Me If You Can. Mm. Uh, and I'll just say the first, there's just kind of a theme for the first three. Mm -hmm. Wolf of Wall Street and then Romeo plus Juliet. Classic. <laughs> Uh, Boz Lerman. I honestly just kind of wanted to talk about the dagger swords or the dagger guns that are called daggers and swords. Mm -hmm. They are right. pretty awesome. But all three of those roles, when I think of what Romeo looks like or what the Wolf of Wall Street guy looks like or what the Catch Me If You Can guy looks like, it's Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. in my head. Oh, yeah. And I really I do like those movies. Romeo and Juliet is kind of just a funny one. Uh, I put some other ones on there that it's I'm great, sure will great probably it is. get on somebody else's list. Uh, John Leguizamo is so great in that You said movie. movies only, so I didn't put Growing Pains on the list. So fuck <laughs> you for that. He was like the living like like foster kid. Right? Yeah, he was like living in a dumpster. Well, or was his shit. name was Luke or something, He was like right? this um, immaculate-looking child. He's like a great-looking child actor. First off, I said roles. No, so no, no. that that what? could include television. Oh, see, uh, Maybe I said movies. You, you know, I talk a lot. Movies. I don't know. <laughs> Gonna review the movie grades, then give your top five Leo performances in movies. Shit. Favorite characters. Then you said top three. Okay. So I meant to say top three roles. <laughs> anyway, Growing Pains, uh, right after Romeo plus Juliet. Okay. I guess. So Sorry about that. Well, I got others, but, you know, those are my three. All right. You want to go to me? Yeah. All right. So, for me, I'm going to go in reverse order. Um, I'm going to go in a little more detail than Counselor Newman did. Oh, man, I'm uh, we'll um, He saves it for the courtroom, though. That's what I like about for, it. <laughs> for, for, for me, uh, you know, when I think of Leonardo DiCaprio, the first thing I think of is rewatchability. Uh, everything he does is extremely rewatchable. Everything he does is... Um, you know he's he's never had a bad performance. I can't think back on anything that, like even the beach. It was a shitty movie, but right. like but he was he awesome was good in, in it. Um, so for me, you know, I'm gonna go in reverse order. Number three, uh, William Costigan, The Departed. Nice. Uh, Martin Scorsese's movie from 2006. He plays the undercover agent that's infiltrating uh, the Boston organized. Crime syndicate, you know, loosely based off Whitey Bulger. I mean, that movie is probably, you know, gun to my head. It's probably a top three favorite movie of mine all time. I love it. Number two, uh, Mr. Newman talked about this one. Uh, Frank Abagnale Jr., yes. Catch Me If You Can, 2002 movie by Steven Spielberg. You know, it's a true story based on Abagnale, mm -hmm. who, you know, successfully conned millions of dollars from Pan Am before he turned 19 up, years Rogers old. Um, obviously played opposite Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is phenomenal in that movie. Um, but uh, that was my second and the number one, you know, Mr. Mr. Counselor Newman talked about this as well. It's Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street, 2013, Marty Scorsese. You know, it's a true story about, Rampant corruption on Wall Street, drugs, sex, money, excess. I mean, all the things all, it's awesome. all young boys <laughs> mean. It's um, awesome. <laughs> you know, The Wolf of Wall Street, it was on FX last night. I watched it. A very few um, sort of R rated movies. Not just R rated, but three hour R rated movies, too. <laughs> it's a lot of commercials. Yeah. Can I watch on FX, TNT, and all that because they, they have to, you know, Edit out oh, God. Jonah Hill's prosthetic penis and, <laughs> and all that. But, uh, I know you missed it. Yeah, it's <laughs> outstanding. And for me, an honorable mention, uh, this is one that I guarantee you nobody talked about. Um, Roger Ferris nope. in the movie know. Body of Lies uh, by Ridley Scott in 2010. He plays opposite Russell Crowe in that movie. Good He's movie. an undercover CIA agent in the Middle East. If you have not seen that, he is really, really good in that. That is a very underrated not highly talked about the DiCaprio movie, and I will say one thing: I do have a little bit of a, um, of a, of a, of a sort of asterisk on this. I haven't seen the movie that he won an Academy Award for. I haven't either. So, you know, I hate to say it, I have not either. I haven't I seen the. Say, yeah, we need to watch it. Movie? We need to watch I don't it. Want to watch I don't know. And Tom Hardy's in it too, and I yeah, love Tom I love Hardy. Fucking Tom I couldn't Hardy. give a fuck about watching that movie. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's I do want to see it. Like, like I don't. 
like obviously he was great in it. He's great in everything. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like he won the Academy Award for that movie because they screwed him over for a couple movies before that. Like he should have won the Academy Award for The Departed. Should have won for Wolf of Wall Street. He should have won for, Departed but that was great. Departed. Was Wolf of Wall Street before? That was the year before was, yeah. where he lost to McConaughey. Right. The party came out after. No, 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 no. Wolf no. of Wall Street was the, the year before, before the Revenant. The Revenant. Oh, okay. I'm trying to hate for Dallas Buyers yep. Club. I've never seen Dallas never Buyers seen Club either. either. But anyways, those are my three: William Costigan, Frank Abagnale, and Jordan Belfort with Roger Ferris as an honorable mention. So, hey, great minds think alike. I'll start with my honorable mentions first. Um, let's see here. And when he played Amsterdam and Gangs of New York, very good, great Gangs movie. New York is great. Great movie. It's, that a, it's, movie a, too long it, it's, it's another too one. Long. It's it's a long one, and he's in a he's in. A, you know, one. I should have done the the stats. He's in quite a few movies that are hella long, for lack of a better term. But great flick. Um, you know, obviously him, Daniel Day Lewis, Cameron Day Diaz. Lewis. Dude, Daniel um, Day Lewis is so fucking oh the Bill Bill Cutting Bill the Butcher character. Oh, it's so good. Like, listen, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of what Daniel Day Lewis does. Sure. Like. Like, when I'm on the set, like, you have to call me Bill Cutting or, <laughs> right, or Mr. Right. President. He's a method actor kid. to the fullest extent. But, like, whatever he does works because oh, it works. he's a fucking another one that is, like, anything that he does is mm-hmm. just, like, phenomenal. Oh, it's next level. And, I mean, you have these two monsters in there. And that, yeah. that too, is a Scorsese flick, too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right? Yes, it is. So, a phenomenal movie. Go check out Gangs of New York if you haven't yet. Billy and the Departed, fantastic. Um, Cobb and Inception, I thought he did a fantastic job with Inception. It's a great movie. Rewatchability factor. I mean, it's a mind fuck. At the end of the day, um, you know, just about it. Nobody, nobody can agree on how <laughs> right. what, what it actually right. happened. No, yeah, I mean, you can't. But uh, yeah, he does. He does fantastic in that role yeah, and that's a good one. the supporting. The you know, because I think he plays very well off of other great actors too. I mean, he can carry the load himself, but I think he does great when it's a Tom Hanks, you know, next to him. Or a Tom Hardy. And, he's you know, a good actor. Yeah. Obvious statement, but yeah, yeah. he's a good actor. Yeah, I hate to say that, but you know, he really is a, he's a well. good actor. Um, and then as far as top three, you know, right there with a bullet, Frank Abagnale Jr. Um, he is just fantastic and catch me if you can. I probably watch this movie oh. at least four to five times a year Great. minimum. It's outstanding. Yeah, and it's, that's another one that's on TV. Christopher Walken. Walken. Christopher Walken. He's so fucking good in that and movie. Amy, um, Amy Adams. Amy Adams. It yeah. is such a good flick. If you have not seen Catch Me If You Can, I mean, please go watch it. Based on a true story, it's it's incredible. Um, I love him, so my, I guess that would be my number how'd you, three. How'd you pass the bar, Frank? <laughs> how'd you do it? Study. Study. <laughs> that's nuts. Actually, pretty accurate. The accents are damn really good, study. too. <laughs> Um, number two, I gotta go with Calvin Candy and Django Unchanged. I, you know, when he was the uh, host of Candyland and all that fun stuff. But he's great in that. He's just, he's just, man, he's just fantastic. His southern drawl and everything. I mean, uh, he just made you feel like you were in wherever he was, Charleston or whatever southern it state was. that they were in. Um, it was Charleston. Was yeah. It Charleston? Yeah. 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 So even I never better. Even paid that much credence yeah. to like what I just, southern. Yeah. That's all. I he was good, and then he's, he makes a monster seem almost likable. Right. Well, that that right. might be. I guess you said your favorite roles of him. That's definitely up there for me. I just didn't put it because he's only in really one act. And that's movie. that's the thing. I, I would. But the only reason I was hesitant to put it in there because he's not in there long. Well, you did say favorite roles, and that's right. I mean, he is. He's excellent. Right. That goes back to what you said. He's he's definitely. I know the answer there. He's a supporting actor in that movie. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he's great in that. Yeah. He just he does a scene. He does what he's supposed to. He plays exactly. well. And, and he, he obviously improvises well because when he slams his hand on the table, he cut his hand in real life, and then he puts his blood on, um, I'm going to butcher an ape, so I'm not even going to try, but Jamie Foxx's wife's face, that's his real blood. They, you know, Broom, and, Broomhilda. Broomhilda. I called her Pumpkin Pie. And I, and I was like, what was her name? Pumpkin Pie. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, he's just fantastic. Wait a minute, what does he call the little girl, Puddin' Puss? Yes, no, he's like, Puss. Pumpkin Puss. Pumpkin Puss. Pumpkin she's Puss. like, please don't call me Pumpkin Puss. Puss. <laughs> she's like, I don't, I don't she, She's like, I know you're going through a lot right now. <laughs> I don't like to be called names she's, like Puddin' Puss. That was like the best way to check someone, but be so polite about it. <laughs> and then uh number one with a bullet jordan belfort i mean wolf of wall street again rewatchability factor it's one of the few three-hour movies i can just i probably watch that movie once a month no bullshit um and he's just fantastic in it he definitely i mean not taking anything away from matthew mcconaughey winning the oscar that year 
But I, I, me personally, I would have given it to uh, to Leo for that performance, just as far as the range from the happy to sad, the emotions. I mean, when the guy blows his top, he really does it with the best of them. But then he also can play cool, calm, and collective like nobody else as well. I you mean, his range Jordan, is all. You can't give Jordan the MVP every year, man. <laughs> you know, they had to give it to Carl Malone. <laughs> right. You know, and that's just the reality. I mean, I think... And that, that's almost why I think they gave it to him for the Revenant, right? Because they're like, look, we fucked this guy over in The Departed. We fucked him <laughs> over in Wolf of Wall Street. Right. We fucked him over in Titanic. <laughs> I hate Titanic. Dude, right. that, nobody at Titanic not even on my paper. No, <laughs> well, likes, he's still great in that movie. Yeah, That's another long fucking movie that it's, he's in. It's Jesus too Christ. long. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's three, you know it, it's three hours too long. Definitely a movie where <laughs> I know when the ending's happening. <laughs> yeah. Fucking sinks. <laughs> <laughs> Spoil- spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for those who have not seen Titanic. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, uh, I've seen a lot of shit online. People are posting spoilers for The Lion King and people are getting mad. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Mufasa, Mufasa died. Yeah. Mufasa Mufasa died. died. Real died. early in the movie, too. Uh, but, so, uh, Departed was on Saban's list. That was four for me. Okay. Um, he has a great character. There's just so many other great people oh, in yeah. that movie. That I was focusing just on Leo. That's why I didn't. Right. Retire. But I do fucking love that movie. Matt Damon's great uh, in that movie. Jack, I also, obviously. Five and six on my list were Inception and Shutter Island, which nobody mentioned. But sure, I mentioned Island. Inception. Oh, sure, did you? Yeah, I must have. I was the, watching. The, oh, yeah, it was. It actually was yeah, that you know, exact it moment. It came back and you said, <laughs> no one knows what happens at the end. I was like, I wonder if you said Inception. <laughs> Shutter Island's another Scorsese movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I really that, like it. It was. It's great, you know. I, the obviously, twist got the, me. Twist, the twist. Yeah, the twist got me too. I guess we won't spoil that movie. No. But, uh, we'll try to leave you alone with that one, audience. It got me. <laughs> yeah, for sure, me too. He's come a long way from Growing Pains and Critters Three. That's uh, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I said he's never had a bad performance. <laughs> I haven't seen Critters. 3, I'm sure he's so. probably great in Critters Three. Double feature <laughs> Critters Three and The Revenant. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we'll do a we'll do a Facebook watch party for that. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll get the viewers. <laughs> Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Zero Dark Nerdy. Make sure you check out our website, www.popculturepodcast.com. A lot of new blogs on there. Big shout out to our boy Timmy, really adding a lot to the uh, the blog and news page. We have the cosplay and Comic-Con calendar on there. We're doing updates all the time. Anything you'd like to see, let us know. Any podcast episodes you'd like to cover, we have the contact us form on the website. And that's courtesy of our friends over at Zibster, Z-I-B-S-T-E-R.com. They'll take care of all your website and SEO needs. Big shout out to our partners over at uh, MVP Elite Breakers. Make sure you're listening to the Water Cooler. Say what you want to plug the Water Cooler real quick. The Water Cooler at WC Sports Pod on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook. Myself and and my boy Luke are doing a sports podcast now. We got three episodes. Probably maybe by now we're off next week. So we got well, we got three episodes coming up in the next month or so. We have a a, a quarterback uh, power ranking that we that we've done. That's an outstanding. I think it's the best episode we've done so far. You'll have uh, NCAA season preview coming, NFL Ooh. season preview coming. All that's coming in the in the month of uh, August. So, so be ready. Bay to, Buccaneers episode. Uh, <laughs> we talked about Jameis Winston for thirteen seconds. <laughs> you, this is um, great radio. But I'm shoving the W into my dog right now. Yeah, yeah, he likes to eat W. So at WC Sports Pod, check us out. Yeah, they're uh, right now. The episodes are currently on our SoundCloud page. Um, once they have a couple more in the tank, we're going to add them to iTunes. All that fun stuff. YouTube. So uh, yes, YouTube as well. More videos coming your way too. And then uh, again, big thank you to our buddy Attorney Newman, Andrew Newman. Check him out, attorneynewman.com. And what's the phone number again? It's 336-663-2388. And you get arrested or have dick pics, I guess. <laughs> Hit him up. If you get arrested, though. I do appreciate you the plug. You get arrested DWI. while sending dick All pics. All DWIs and traffic is yes. the majority of my business. So, so yeah. you know, if you're dumb. So if you take your Lamborghini home from the country club and... <laughs> like when you're on preludes. See, all you got to do is when the cops come to your door after you fucked your car up and drove home drunk. Don't admit to it. <laughs> fuck them. Mm-hmm. Shut the door. Tell them to fuck off. Hey, there that's free. That's free, free legal advice free. right there, okay? That's the last one you're getting. The rest will cost you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you on the next episode. Later. Yes! Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.